Here's a really annoying problem that has a lot of parts to it. Uh, but the good thing about this problem, though, is that even though there's a lot going on here, most of the parts to it are actually not that hard. Like, a lot of them require you to know a formula or know a particular rule for how waves work mathematically. But there's not a whole lot of mental effort required here, with the exception, of course, of part A. So we start off with, in my opinion, the hardest part of the problem, in which we have to take the plot that the problem gives us of Y, the transverse position of the wave, with respect to time, and we have to decide what the graph of Y versus X would look like. So the graph given to us is a sine wave that starts off rising, which means that it is a positive sine wave. And we want to know whether a graph of y versus x would also be a positive sine wave, or if it would be a negative sine wave, which would start going down and look something like this. Now you could probably figure out the answer to this problem by like, uh, visualizing it in some way, or, or drawing some pictures, or, or making an animation in your head, or, or testing out some values. But I'm going to go through how you could work this out mathematically, which is a little tricky. Since the, the snapshot we're looking at in both cases is a case where x is equal to 0, let's try and work out what a formula of y of 0t would look like. Of course, it's positive, so there will be no negative sign in front of the y sub m. And then we have the sign of, and then the argument is k times x, except again, x equals 0 here. So that term disappears, and we start off with the plus or minus omega t, and then you add the phase constant. But let's discuss for a moment this part of the problem, the plus or minus. The plus or minus can be figured out using the rule for this when it comes to mathematical uh, representations of waves. The problem tells us that this wave is traversing along the positive x-axis. It's moving in the positive direction of the x-axis. Conventionally, this means if the wave is moving in the positive direction, then this should be the negative sign. If it's moving in the negative direction, then you go with the positive sign. But here, the negative sign is correct. Quick reminder, by the way, that this function that we're writing here still only represents this particular graph. And what you'll notice is that this negative sign is a little out of place because this graph is supposed to represent a positive sign function. But having a negative argument would potentially turn this into a negative function. So in order to correct for this, this phase shift here should be something that turns this entire argument into something that's positive. As a general rule, everything in the argument becomes positive, or, or can become negative, if this phi, if this phase shift, is equal to 90 degrees, or pi radians. So this phi is equal to pi radians. Because only in that case can this function be written as y of m times the sine of positive omega t, which makes perfect sense with the graph given to us by the problem. So now that we have this information, let's try and create a formula for the plot that the problem wants us to describe, the case where we're looking for a function of x where t is held at zero. In this case, we have y of m times the sine, where we have kx, and then the since t is 0, the omega t function disappears, and then it's plus the phase shift, which we discussed is pi. And as I mentioned earlier, having the phase be pi is the equivalent of having the whole argument be uh, a negative of what it is now, but without that shift which means that this can also be written as y sub m times the sine of negative kx. And not only that, but this can also be written as the negative of y sub m times the sine of kx due to an identity, a mathematical identity, that the sine of negative x is equal to the negative of the sine of positive x. And this is just due to the fact that the sine function is an odd function. But the, key, but the main takeaway here is that if this is one way that we can represent the function of y versus x, 
and it has a negative sign, then that means that the answer to part A is that this is going to be a negative function. So the plot of y versus x is going to look like a negative sine function. And that's the answer to part A. Okay, so that was kind of confusing. Feel free to ask questions about that in the comments down below, because I understand that that might not have been totally clear. Uh, but fortunately, the rest of the parts of the problem are pretty easy. Part B asks us to find y sub m. In other words, it's asking us to find the amplitude of the function, which is just the, the point in the problem or in the wave that is the furthest away from its origin point. So in other words, where these maximums or where these minimums are. And that's easy because we can see at the graph that it's just going to be where y sub s is. And the problem tells us that y sub s is equal to 4.0 centimeters. So the answer to part B is 4.0 centimeters for the amplitude. Part C asks us to find k, the angular wave number. Now we're getting into the part of, the, of this problem where it's just a lot of formulas that you kind of want to know. And the formula for the angular wave number k is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength. And the wavelength is given to us by the problem. The wavelength is given to us as 20 centimeters. So we put that into our calculator, then we find an angular wave number of 0 0.31 radians per centimeter. So that's the angular wave number of the wave. Part D asks us to find omega, which is the angular frequency. But again, we've got a formula for this. The angular frequency, omega, is equal to 2 pi divided by t, the period of the wave. Or in other words, how long it takes for the wave to go through one cycle, which we can see from this graph is 10 seconds. So 2 pi divided by 10 seconds is equal to about 0 0.63 radians per second. And that is the angular frequency. Part E asks for the phase shift phi, which we found in part A as being equal to pi. So that's the answer to that. And part F asks for the sign in front of the omega, which again, we found as part of part A. It's negative. And part G asks us to find the speed of the wave. Again, there's a formula for this. The speed of the wave, or V, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength of the wave. We don't have the frequency right now, but we do have the period. And frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period. So the wavelength divided by the period which we find is equal to 2.0 centimeters per second. So that is the speed of the wave. And lastly, the final part of the problem asks us to find the transverse velocity of the wave when x equals 0 and t is equal to 5 seconds. Transverse velocity can be found by simply taking the derivative of y, of the transverse position of the wave with respect to time, so now that we've spent the last bunch of parts of the problem figuring out all of the other constants, let's set up a formula for the, the wave that we can take the derivative of. The full formula here, y of x and t is equal to 4 centimeters times the sine of 0.31x minus 0.63t plus pi, because that's where the phase shift is. One way you could make this slightly simpler is to get rid of the pi and then add a negative sign on the outside, as we discussed earlier, which makes this a simpler version of the formula to work with. Now let's take a derivative with this with respect to t, so I'll call it u of x and t. And it's a pretty simple derivative, you have to do some chain rule, but taking the derivative with respect to t, we find that it's equal to negative 4 times the cosine of the stuff inside, 0.31x minus 0.63t, times the derivative of the inside with respect to t, so 0.63. And when we take this and we plug in for it 0 for x and 5.0 seconds for t, then we find a speed of about negative 2.5 centimeters per second. Make sure your calculator is in radians, by the way, when you do that calculation. But that's uh, the speed of the transverse velocity.
So that's the final part of the problem. So that's the answer for all these parts. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, again, leave a comment down below and we'll try to help you out. And that's all for this video, and I hope you have a good night. Bye-bye.